Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and I have a lot to say about how to get the most fabric out of a men's dress shirt. Today, we are going to cover the collar and the yoke, and there's a lot in this section. So hopefully we're gonna be able to get to all of it and you'll feel like you've got some useful tips. All right, if you've been with me through part one, two, and three, you know we've prepped our shirt, gotten the buttons out, taken the sleeves off, gotten the side seams and the bottom seams done, and now here we are, we're almost to the promised land. We have almost gotten to the best part. So this is what we have. This is where we are. This is all we have left. It's like a 80s muscle shirt, except in a men's shirt. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna cover the collar and the yoke. The yoke is the part that holds the front part of the shirt to the back, and the collar obviously is the collar. So we're gonna start with collar. This collar is relatively uninteresting. It's just white fabric. Uh, what I have learned from breaking down just so many shirts is that the collar can lure you into thinking there's a lot of fabric there and you can spend a lot of time and energy and really not have a lot of usable fabric to show for it after your time. So I've mentioned I do this um, a lot when we are watching TV in the evening. Uh, sometimes when I've had a long day at work, I need to process, but I don't really need to talk about everything that happened. It gives me a place to put my energy and I will worry it to death and then have not a lot of fabric to show for it. Because it's such a large shirt and I have such a large piece of fabric on the back and front, I'm not really thinking that this white is gonna add to my stash very much. So I'm going to just cut this off. It just is really that simple. Only thing you have to remember when you are going to cut off and trash your collar is starting over here on this very edge. You want to stay as close to the collar line as possible because that is actually going to be that front panel. And so I have been careless and started down here and ended up losing a fair amount of fabric. So I'm going to just cut this right very just tightly along that collar line. It's highly um, lined with interfacing. It's that kind of cardboardy interfacing that we talked about in the cuff section. And so even if it was a fabric that I really loved because it has that heavy duty interfacing in it, it's not something that would be worth the work. So I'm gonna come around here just right on that line and cut that off and that is done. Now, as we were talking about in previous videos, there is there are sometimes some decisions to be made. So that this particular shirt, this combination of fabric, psh, it's gone. But sometimes you open open up a shirt and you this is the this is the outside, this is the inside. There's this lovely strip of fabric right here. Uh, it is just a nice print, and actually there's a really cool ta little tag, hang tag on it, too. And I just loved that, so I saved it when I took that shirt apart. Here's another one. This matches the cuff of the in the previous video, um, and I like it too. I just think that that piece of fabric. Now I'm probably not going to quilt with that, and it's certainly not big enough to use in a project very big, but it's a great little strip of fabric. You can tie a small gift with it. You can use it as a hair tie. Just kind of treat it like a ribbon. Uh, if I get crazy with the scrap quilts, I might use that as a strip, depending on how scrappy and how small. Some of these, this particular collar is wide enough that if I was doing a postage stamp quilt, I could probably get that piece out. I could conceivably get several pieces um, of the one and a half inch that's usually a postage stamp size. If I was gonna do this, I'm gonna show you, I just would cut the buttonholes off and throw that away and then cut off where the buttons would have been. Well, let me give you another example of this. And I like this one because 
It's, um, it's a really pretty fabric. Actually, it would match this sage green. So it's a pink patterned, um, the shirt was pink patterned, but this nice light ivory with a sage and pink. So this works very similarly like the cuff did. So you would wanna start not at the very edge, but kind of down the row a little bit and get your uh, seam reaper in there and kind of get it started. And of course, there it goes. So sometimes you just have to wiggle that in just to get a couple of seams popped and you can kind of work that back and forth. If you get it started well, I actually had started this side. And these, if you look closely, the stitching is actually fairly large stitching. They're pretty big actually. And so I could do this one with my scissors as well, with my very sharp scissors. So I could pull that apart, get it started, and then just snip and pull along the way. Actually, I, this is working so well. If I were doing this for my own, like saving this, this piece of fabric, I probably would do it this way because it seems like it is just almost easier than the seam, seam reaper. Um, and look at that, what a surprise. There's a nice little teeny gingham, pink gingham, teeny, teeny tiny weensy weensy, um, teensy tiny weensy weensy. So you can do that with scissors. I could do that exact same thing if I could get it rolling with my seam ripper. And you just do that all the way around. And then you can decide whether you want to cut this little end off. I probably would, cause that's been turned. And so there's a lot of fabric right there. I'd probably snip that off, snip just like that. But you, that one is done so beautifully and the seams are so large, you might could actually save it intact. So like I said, you could just kind of zip through that um, with your seam reaper or your scissors. So that's an example of a piece of fabric that I would want to save. So we've covered the collar, which in our sage green shirt, it's, it's gone, it's in the waistband. Now we're on the yoke. So this is what's left of the yoke. Surprising amount of fabric in the yoke as well. But the first thing we have to do is get it apart of the, from the back and the front. Um, again, here we go. This is very, very much like the side seams and the bottom seams. So much so that we probably won't show you the whole thing. Uh, I'm just cutting it away. I could seam rip this. I could use my little bitty scissors, but it's half an inch of fabric at best. And then usually that fabric is frayed from being underneath and having been washed possibly a hundred times. So I just cut right there along the seam of the yoke. That was the back. I'm gonna turn it around and do the exact same thing on the front. So I'm starting at the edge, cutting as close to along that seam as possible to get that cut away. Now, the thing about yokes, same thing with the collar and cuffs. A lot of times it's a great place that they hide, they being men's shirt manufacturers. Nothing like not having an antecedent there to let you know who they is. So they put really interesting fabric, really, sometimes really, really pretty fabric. So much so that I may or may not have bought a whole shirt just for the yoke on the inside but don't tell anybody that. So here's the yoke. This is probably three, maybe three and some change inches across at the narrowest. That is a whole strip of fabric and on this side as well. Um, what I usually do with tags is I kind of do a little test to see if they're gonna pop free. And if they look like they wanna come free pretty easily, then I'll go on and seam rip them out. If there's some resistance there, if they're really highly reinforced, which I don't know why you would really need your tag reinforced, but I promise you they are put on with real intent to keep it there. So I've already separated that just that quick. So in this case, Thankfully, it is actually coming, coming loose really quickly and easily. And so I will pull that tag off um, and work that free. And then I'll have those, both of those front and back sections. There it is. So I have the front 
and the back. So you can cut down the seams to separate them. Uh, you can cut it with a very sharp scissors. You can seam rip it, or sometimes I'll do this number and just get it started and just tear that thing all the way down. Drives my husband crazy because a lot of times we're watching TV when we do this and I won't warn him. And then all of a sudden there's this horrible <laughs> ripping noise. <laughs> um, so that's a great way to get it apart. I have done that and then rip the whole shirt or the whole yoke. So you do have to make your decisions wisely. Um, but a lot of times like, just like this, if you can just get it started, it just will. And then now there's a section and here's a section. Um, so that is surprising amount of fabric there as well. So, but I did want to show you, um, an example of what I'm talking about. This was a yoke, this piece of gorgeousness was the inside of a shirt. The shirt was a navy uh, with white polka dots. And I just loved that fabric, it's so pretty. And then this one may or may not have come from the shirt that I bought for this purpose. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just a, it's just like a really cool paisley. And yes, I'll have to use it as scrap. I can't use it as like a feature in a quilt, but I just think it's so pretty. So, and then, so that's an example of that. And then, um, to let you see what that looks like inside the shirt that matches that collar that I just did. Um, and it has a, this, I, I chose this on purpose. There's a ton of tag work there that I would just cut out. So I would cut that whole, whole yoke out. And then I probably wouldn't fuss over this tag and middle section. I would just cut right here and cut right here. And then that still gives me that nice, decent piece of um, fabric. And then last one. So I have a love of linen. And this is a huge ivory linen shirt. And this one, if you can see in the detail, it has this pretty white with blue. It's like a graph paper looks like graph paper to me. Um, and it is just, I did the test with the tag, just like I said, to do that. And it, the tag just is coming up like butter, like butter. And the, uh, yoke was actually, is actually really easy to come up as well. Um, both with scissors and with my seam ripper. So you can get that started and just snip, snip, snip all along. So I won't belabor the point. I think I've made my point. You may decide, yes, that's beautiful fabric. I don't, I don't want to spend my time doing that. But that's why we named the video how to get the most fabric instead of how to do this really, really fast and easy. So that is the end of this video, which is the yoke and collar. We've now done the lion's share of the work of the shirt. Our next video, which is going to be the best. Well, I don't know. I, who knows, um, is the big, big pieces of fabric. Uh, and so I hope you'll join me for that. Thanks for watching today. I'm Kathy Martin, and this is the Catbird Quilts. Bye.